Well, do you have a black eye? Mom might have said, put a steak on it. Well, it's one of those tried and true home remedies that most Americans have been doing for decades. Only problem is many of them are not true. Dr. Mark Siegel of the Fox News Medical A team is here to break down myth versus fact. Good morning to you. I survived the paper bag. Yeah, you, you did. I survived the flexibility test. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about the raw steak heals a black eye. I have to admit, I've never heard this one. But is this myth or fact? This is absolutely ridiculous. It's fi it's fiction because, you know, you put you go put a steak on your on your eye. You could get bacteria in there. E. coli is in a steak sometimes if you don't cook it. Now, the idea actually is that it cools the eye down. But instead of using a steak, Gretchen, you could use a tea bag, which has tannins in it, which decrease inflammation, caffeine, and antioxidants. A tea bag helps. A steak can get your eye infected. Well, maybe the theory was that the steak was frozen in plastic, in, you know, and so it would be like a bag of peas or something like that. Would it be okay then? Still, I think it might leak. I'd stay away <laughs> okay. from it. All eat, right. Cook it and eat it on the barbecue. All right. Sounds good to me. Uh, let's go to our favorite prop of the day, which is the paper bag. Does this actually work? When that, this one isn't out? ridiculous. This one is dangerous. Because first of all, why are you hyperventilating? Could be that you're having a heart attack. Could be asthma. Could be that you're having a panic attack. And if you actually use the bag, what's going to happen is you get more and more carbon dioxide into your lungs. You're going to get more anxious. It'll actually make you confused and you can pass out from this. Really a dangerous idea. You don't need the carbon dioxide. You have to figure out why you're hyperventilating. That's what you have to do and calm down. I do remember hearing this one growing up, that if you got a burn, you're supposed to rub butter on it. Where did that come from, and is it true? It's the opposite. You should take that butter and put it on the steak, by the way, not use it on, <laughs> not use it on a burn. Okay. Because burns are hot, and oil makes them hotter. So your burn's going to get worse from the oil. You need to use something to cool the burn down, like ice. Like alloy is really good on a burn, or as you were saying, silvadine cream, because it prevents the burn from getting infected. You do not want to use butter on a burn. All right. Now, somebody gets a cut. You're with your kids. They fall down. They get a scrape. You run inside and you think, okay, I'll spray it with, you know, some peroxide or I'll spray it with some, something else, alcohol maybe. Or should I just run water over it? First of all, a really big burn, a, a really big cut, you actually have to go to the ER and get checked. Mm -hmm. But a small cut, you just want to wash it out with water. That's a fact. Because water will c clear the debris and decrease your risk of getting it infected. If you, if you use anything else like peroxide, you're going to end up irritating it. Peroxide is for when it's already infected. If you use it at the beginning, you're going to irritate it. It's going to get angry, and then it may actually get infected. Do not be your own doctor. Call me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. You putting out your number for everybody? No, they can just email us. Yeah, email friends us at, at foxnews.com. Uh, if you have any questions for Dr. Mark Siegel, we'll pass them along. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much Great for separating you. fact from fiction. Thank you.